Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. Yes, ma'am, in the corner. Fuck. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. So today we start our pizza series. So today we're doing pan pizza. Next will be Greg doing St. Louis style pizza. We have searched the world and found Provel cheese back in stock and ordered it via the interweb, and it is here. So in a few days, he'll be doing the St. Louis style pizza. But I'm gonna start this off with pan pizza. Now I need enough dough to make two pizzas and my two cast iron skillets. Um, my larger one here is about 37 inch diameter. Really? What? Okay. about 13 inch diameter. And uh, then I have a second one here, which is probably about, I don't know, 26 inches or so. Male. Okay, maybe nine and a half. I need enough crust to fill both of those. We're starting off with 24 ounces of all purpose flour. Just regular missionary position flour, no crazy stuff. Into that, we're going to put three teaspoons of kosher salt, and we're gonna put three and three eighths ounces of yeast in here. Not that quick acting stuff, just regular run of the mill yeast. Into that, we're gonna put 16 and a half ounces of water at room temperature this room. So you need to come here and get some water from me and then use it. All right, now we're going to mix all that together until we get a shaggy dough. We'll start out with the whisk until it gets too crazy, then we'll use our paws. Okay, we're already there. It's crazy. And our end goal here is just to get all the dry stuff incorporated in our dough. I wish you could see right into this bowl as I'm, I'm mixing this stuff because it's exhilarating. No, no, it really isn't. It's just getting the dry stuff and wet stuff mixed together. Okay, we're there. Got to wash the paws. Dough is mixed together, so now we're going to take a medium-sized bowl and get that puppy fully coated with olive oil. Make sure we get every bit of it all the way up the sides. And then the dough goes in. Now we're going to cover this and let it set for 16 to 24 hours. Why do I say 16 to 24 hours? Because exactly 20 hours from now, I'm gonna make this pizza. So that puts me right in the center. That's 16 to 24 hours that I was mentioning. That is at room temperature. So we're gonna get this covered with some. We're gonna get covered with some press and seal. Have a competent person get you a piece of press and seal. Thank you, competent person. That was the director. Gently, gently cover it. Treat it with respect. All right, see you tomorrow. So here we are on pizza day. The crust has been resting at room temperature for about 20 hours or so. Now we're gonna get things together. So first we're going to lightly flour our cutting board here so we have some room to work. I'm gonna turn our dough out. Oh, very nice. So in a perfect world, I would have two pans of equal size. I could just cut this in half and put some in each. But remember, I've got the two different sized 
uh, cast iron skillets, uh, the 37 and a half inch and the uh, 20.2 inch or something to that size. Um, so I'm going to split this about 67.33. So I'm going to eyeball it here. And that is some sticky dough. Now we'll start out with the small pan first. So if I have any dough left over, I can put it into the bigger one. I'm gonna put a generous amount of olive oil in the bottom of this. And then get our dough in. And then get that spread out towards the edges. Now the dough is still stressed from being dumped out so unceremoniously from that bowl onto the counter. So it's not really gonna comply with me. It's not gonna stay in the edges. So what we're gonna do, let's get this covered with some plastic wrap and let it set and relax for about an hour. Now that was just about the amount of dough that I needed for that pan. So we'll set that aside. We'll prep the other pan. <laughs> Okay, now we'll get them covered with plastic wrap and let them rest for at least an hour. I'm about an hour and a half away from uh, cooking these puppies. But we have plenty of other things to do in the meantime. We'll see. It's time to make the sauce. This is gonna get a little bit messy, but it's way worth it. I've got my saucepan on the stove, gonna put that on about medium heat. And then I'm gonna put uh, maybe two tablespoons of olive oil in there. I'm gonna leave that on there until the oil starts to shimmer. So the oil shimmering, in goes the garlic. And we're gonna cook that for about 30 seconds until we get that incredible garlic aroma. The most important ingredient of this sauce is these San Marzano tomatoes. If you haven't cooked with these, you are missing out. And this is the messy and fun part. So I've got the whole peeled tomatoes. As the tomato comes out, I'm gonna grab it and we're going to just squeeze it with our hand. You want a, uh, a high-sided saucepan for this and maybe a shirt that you're not fond of, or you can do this topless. But if you're slow and deliberate, you can get those tomatoes squashed without causing too much of a mess. I love to do it this way because it's gonna leave some chunks of tomato in there, uh, which I think is just a fantastic texture and taste in the pizza. Okay, all the tomatoes are squashed. All the rest of the contents of the can are in. We're gonna give that a quick stir. And then we're gonna wash our paw. Now in goes all the rest of the ingredients. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt and pepper in there. I'm gonna put a pinch of sugar in there. And then we're gonna add our minced oregano basil mixture. Fresh, of course. Get those stirred in. Absolutely gorgeous. Now we're just gonna bring that to a simmer, let those flavors meld together, and then take this pan off the heat and wait for our dough to complete proofing. The other steps between finishing the sauce and getting the pizzas put together is all dependent on you. What do you want on it? I'm gonna take some of my homemade Italian sausage and get that browned. Uh, I want bacon on there, so I'm gonna fry up a few strips of bacon that we can crumble onto the pizza. And I want pepperoni, and that's already ready to go. Mushrooms, cremini mushrooms. So I'm gonna get the mushrooms sliced up and get those sauteed. Then we'll put together our pizza. So the oven's on its way to its max setting. For me, that's 550 degrees, and it's almost there, so that means it's time to start putting the pizza together. Got all the ingredients ready to go. Let's make it happen. We'll start out with the biggest one. What we wanna do now is get all the rest of that dough pushed to the edges. So we're gonna get a little bit of flour on the top of this to help us out. 
and then push that all the way to the edges and give us that rounded crust that we're used to for pan pizzas. And you can see this time after resting that hour, it is moving much easier. Okay, we're there. Now we're gonna give it some of our sauce. Get that all the way to those edges. Now's the point that separates the serious pizza makers from the amateurs. What goes on next is not your toppings, it is a layer of cheese. So we have some shredded mozzarella here, get a good layer down. And if some of this overlaps on the edge of your crust, that's just fine. It's gonna bake right in there and be delicious. Now it's totally your choice what toppings you want, but what we're going with is some bacon. And that's about two pieces there that I'm using on this larger pie. Italian sausage, and you can decide if you want sweet style or spicy. Uh, when we make our own here at the Galley of the Sun, we actually mix those two mixes together, the sweet and the spicy, because we like something right in the middle. I have some cremini mushrooms here that I sauteed in Wagyu beef tallow. I got some thinly sliced sweet onions, and of course you gotta have the pepperoni. If you want that pepperoni that cups up and has that center of delicious oil in it, uh, then what you need to do is get a stick pepperoni with a natural casing and then slice it yourself. This stuff here with the casing removed, it's gonna stay relatively flat. Now we hit it with one more layer of shredded mozzarella. Push that down a little bit, get it all nice and mixed in there. You've gotta have patience for this. Uh, I have a pizza stone in my oven to help that bottom crisp up. My 550 and your 550 may be different. I expect about a 10 to 12 minute cooking time, but you wanna keep an eye on it, especially in that last eight, uh, well, after eight minutes have elapsed, so those last four or five minutes that you may have left. You're looking for a golden brown crust and you're looking for all the cheese to be absolutely melted and then just starting to brown a little bit in places. Let me give you a pro tip. If you are gonna do this and you're gonna take your oven up to its maximum setting, for the love of God, make sure first that it is clean or that you have removed the batteries from every one of your smoke detectors. Either way. What do you think? Looks like pizza to me. So it took right at 10, 10 and a half minutes to get to this point right here. Uh, now comes the hard part. We're gonna let it rest for about five minutes, then we're gonna get it out of the pan, then we'll slice it up and give it a try. Uh, one thing I forgot, as soon as it gets out of the oven, I wanna hit it with a good amount of what we here at Galley of the Sun call our magical cheese. It is a mixture of Asiago, Romano, Parmesan, and Mistra cheese. Okay, it's set for five minutes. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is take a spatula, go around the outside of it, make sure the cheese hasn't welded it to the pan in any spot, and it did in one spot. And next, we're gonna transfer it to the cutting board. Now we're gonna get that sliced up. Let's give it a try. Mm. Damn. <clears throat> that is good. This is definitely something you wanna try. Hey, did you like what you saw today? Hit that like button. Would you like to see more? Hit that subscribe button. Is there some style of pizza you'd like to see us do? Make sure you put that down in the comments. Uh, coming soon, Greg will be doing a St. Louis style pizza, and then one of the two of us will be doing a Chicago pizza, a Detroit style pizza, a New York style pizza, but we wanna make sure that we give full coverage out there and get every type of pizza there is. So definitely let us know in the comments if there's something you'd like us to try. Thank you very much, and until next time, Fair winds and following seas.